Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion, whether it's to improve your sleep. I love their sleep gummies. I take them everywhere. Your mood or your focus. They even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company. They use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Urinary tract infections are extremely common. Around 1 in 2 women and 1 in 20 men will get a UTI in their lifetime. Plus, once you've had one UT challenge, you're way more susceptible to another in the future. That's why you just need Just Thrive's UT123. This product can actually prevent UTIs while maintaining your urinary tract health. UT123 targets both immediate and long-term relief. We've all heard to drink cranberry juice for your urinary tract, but did you know that for the full effects, you need the whole cranberry? Not just juice, but the skin, flesh, and even the seeds. Well, UT123 uses superior ingredients that utilizes the whole fruit. This supplement truly is the full package. So if you're someone who struggles with the constant urge to urinate, a burning feeling when you pee, pelvic pain, or just want to be proactive in your urinary health, Just Thrive is for you. Just Thrive is so confident you'll love their product that there is a 100% money-back guarantee on every purchase made through JustThriveHealth.com. And for a limited time, you can save 20% off site-wide at JustThriveHealth.com with promo code SEXWITHEMILY. That's JustThriveHealth.com and use code SEXWITHEMILY for 20% off your order. You're going to love it. Hey guys, can I ask you a question? How are your balls feeling right now? Are they super clean and dry? Does your partner complain or is not always willing to go downtown? If so, I've got something for you. I've just launched a new product called Down Under Comfort for my brand Emily and Tony. It's really unique. It's a cream to tapioca powder formula that is designed to keep men fresh and clean down under or wherever they need. And girls can use it too, under their breasts, their lower back, anywhere they want to stay fresh. So help keep this podcast free and your balls dry. Use code EMILY to get 20% off your first purchase. Check them out today at emilyandtony.com. Trust me and you're welcome. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. You know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex relationships and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com where you can check out all my podcasts, my blogs, my videos, anything you want to know about having better sex and relationships. Just assuming while you're listening to the Sex with Emily podcast, you can find it all on my website. And the easiest thing to do is just to subscribe to the podcast because I do two, two a week. You'll never miss a podcast. They'll just end up right there in your inbox and all will be good because I know you don't want to miss anything that I have to say. Um, and I want to thank everyone for listening and I love hearing from you and I appreciate it. I read all your emails that you send to feedback at sexwithemily.com. So keep them coming. And also on Wednesdays between 1230 and one o'clock Pacific Standard Time, if you're on Twitter and if you're not, you should be on Twitter um, at Sex with Emily, hashtag Ask Emily. I will be answering all of your sex and relationship questions between 1230 and one. So you can do that. Join me there. It'll be really, really fun. And today's show, I'm really excited about my guest, but I'll get to in a minute. But I have 
Ernest Green on the show, and he is the director, editor, and author of a new book called Master of O, which is based on the story of O, which is a infamous French novel from 1954. And it's a pretty erotic tale here. We're going to get into it. It's, it's dirty, sexy, hot, and we're going to talk about that. But I'm luckily, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised that Nina Hartley came, who's also his partner. They've been together for 14 years. So, Nina, thank you for joining me. Nina's been on the show several times. And we're going to get, because, you know, one of the top questions I get asked in my relationship, in my relationship, in my show, is how do we spice things up? How do we keep things interesting? How do I get my partner to try this or that? I mean, literally, I think that is probably the top. I get three asked, asked three top questions. That's one of them. Um, and so I think today they're, 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 you know, Ernest has been in the BDSM community for about 40 years. 40 years. And so, you know, I'm not saying that you got to go all out BDSM, but there's a lot of elements here that you can learn that can help spice up your relationship. And we're going to break it down for you. And we're going to talk about how they've been happy and had a happy relationship together for 14 years where they, you know, both, I mean, who keeps Nina Hartley happy for 14 years? It's pretty amazing. And, um, and you're pretty amazing yourself too. Not to say that you wouldn't be difficult as well. Not difficult, but you guys have had your, your share of sex. It's challenging. Um, so I'm excited to talk to you guys both. We're going to get into all that. We also might get to some emails today. And um, yeah, I want to talk to Anderson for a second. Anderson. What up, baby? How are you? I'm good. I love that you came by my office today. I did. I did that the was pop-ins. the highlight of my day. Was it really? Yeah. Must I, have been a sad day. It kind of was a sad day because I was in the valley all day at a meeting. What? What's wrong with the valley? That's where I live. What are you I trying know. to say, well, bitch? Well, if you, I knew you were there, I would have had lunch. No, it was just like a really long meeting. Here's what uh, the listeners need to know about Emily. Okay, so I walk into her office. It's smack dab in the middle of Hollywood, right? And it's in the, it's it's like hopping. There's no place to park. All these tourists taking pictures of every, people are taking a picture of me. People <laughs> are just taking pictures. They're so everywhere. hot. They think uh, you're so all like all like those buses that have like the tops cut off. I mean, that the, the epicenter right. of Hollywood totally. is where you are. Uh, beautiful view on the 11th floor. No, house. Emily has no idea what else, what's outside the window. None. No, I just don't have time to look out. The, I know I have a view right of the Hollywood in front sign. Of you. Like the Roosevelt, the pool, you see all the Hollywood sign, downtown LA. I'm like, look at this. She's like, oh, I've never seen that before. No, I hadn't I've seen the pool. Seen that. I've been, I was there for three days before my friend came. He's like, you know, you see the Hollywood sign. Cause I, and that's bad. That's what my mom always no, says. You're, Pay focused. Attention. you're focused on the dick in front of you, which is good. <sighs> you know what, though? I just, I, I do love my office and I need to appreciate it. It is beautiful office space. So thank you for coming by. And you saw my sex toy. You th- and you're like, oh, I thought there'd be more sex toys. I around. was hoping for like, like 10. What do you want, like 50? I wanted like, like, the uh, deer heads on the walls of hunters. I wanted like giant black dongs on, on like. I'm so trophies. sorry. Next time, next time I'll do that for you. But right, cool. I appreciate you stopping by. It was it was, it was fun to see you. And um, so also, I guess we'll, let's just oh, oh one more thing. On July 16th, I will be teaching a workshop at the Hustler Hollywood Store, which is legendary uh. on Sunset Boulevard. How to blow his mind uh, with sex with Emily is what it's you, called. You came up with that idea on this show. I did, didn't I? Right in that front idea, of but the how to blow his mind. Did I come up with that title? Yeah, well, no, not that. You know, what's so funny is because I just came up with it yesterday. But I, for, I should listen to my shows. <laughs> Do most people listen to their? Because everyone's like, you should just listen. I'm like, I don't have time. I don't have time to listen to anything else. I did say that though. Oh, you should listen and get caught by a listener like who can hear what you're listening to in traffic or something. Like Embarrassing. You listening to yourself? Yeah. I like. I you know, no time. But um, yes, I am teaching a workshop. I'm really excited about it, and everyone should just check out the the Hustler Store in Hollywood. It's legendary. Mm-hmm. It's been there for a long time. And so, if you're in town, I would love to see you, meet you in person, and um, make when the is trip. That? When it is July 16th, and I will have in the evening in the evening, and I will have more details to follow. And what do you get to see if you show up? If you show up, you get to learn my tips for blowing him away in bed there will be some blowjob tips there will be some toy demonstrations some kink how to spice things up in the bedroom um and we'll have some cocktails and some food and it'll be a great night and the store is beautiful it's amazing it's a huge it's a, it's a legendary you should if you you know you come to hollywood you're like oh i want to see the hollywood sign you should also go to the it hollywood should be on store. your checklist yeah it should and if you if you're listening to this and you, you do live in la or you're there you can you at, tell them at the checkout that you uh mention my name emily sex with emily and you get 20 percent off whatever you buy i believe Something like, you get some good percentage off. I should know that. It's 20% confirmed in here. Okay. I just said 20%. So tell them that's what I said. Okay. So, hello, yes. Ernest. Hello. Green. I am so glad you're here. So, okay. So, you've directed over 500 features, kinky yes, features. I have, started mostly. in a lot of kinky features. Yep. And you also, so your book, um, your brand new book, Master of O, is based on the erotic novel Story of O, which yes. was published in 1954 by French author Paulina Ria. Uh, Riage, right? Riage? Pauline Riage. Riage. Well, that was one of many pseudonyms. I thought it was Riage, and then it was someone said Riage, because I do speak French. Anyway, right, it wasn't her real name. Um, uh, you, so basically, you, you bring uh, Riage 
tale of erotic submission to modern-day Los Angeles to look at the other side of the famous stories from the male perspective. It includes detailed depictions of BDSM techniques like bondage, flogging, electrical stimulation, but also explores the remarkable intimacy and trust that comes from being on either side of that equation. And you've been active, like I said, in the BDSM community for 40 years, conducting workshops and, workshops and seminars. And he's been married to Nina Hartley, sex positive porn star, pornographic film director, sex educator, feminist author since 2003. That's what I have. It's a long time. That is a long Congratulations time. Congratulations on that. Although it's just flown by, I got to tell you. Really? Because you guys yeah. are so happy together? Yeah, we Marital are. bliss? It really is. What's no the ki- secret? No kids. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> to me, that's that totally. I, I'm with you. I get it. We were it. past that before we did the marriage. But thing. did you ever think that you did you have earning earnings to have children ever? No, no. Nope. Never, right. never hit me. I kept waiting and never. Right. No she, battery in the me biological. Neither. Nothing. Clock. I kept waiting. I'm like, there. I don't, I don't have it. Like it didn't yeah, happen. They forgot to wind your clock at the factory. Right. Exactly. And I'm fine with that. Right. We have full mm-hmm. lives without it. So, um, okay, and so, I looked around at my family when I was young and decided right then and there, eh, that's enough of that. Same thing. Same with me. I'm like, my family really like marriage, divorce, the whole thing. No, thank you. So, okay, Ernest. I mean, I just, I so many questions for you, but I want to know first though, like your history. Like, when did you first know that you were a kinky soul? I never didn't know from the first sexual thoughts that I ever had. They were all around power exchange and power play. They were all around uh, bondage and things associated with it. They were all about that. Like at what age? I would say that by the time I was maybe 12 or 13, I knew this was what was going to be. But how did you know? Like, Had you seen images? Had you been watching? Where? I just respond. I'll tell you. I re- listen, by the time I was 10, I'd already tied up every kid in the neighborhood. We had to move 13 times like before, I, before I was in junior high school. I believe it is. <laughs> That's a whole other subject. But I do, do believe that it's somewhat heritable. It's uh, in that sense, if, there, if there's a gay gene, there's probably a kinky gene. There probably is a kinky gene. Because I, I have other family members who, you know, without consultation and having grown up nowhere near each other, right. when we bump into each other, the subject has a way of coming up. So, uh, yeah, I think that has something to do with it. And um, I also just found it uh, you know, fascinating, intriguing in some way. It was the thing that pushed the button. Right. It was the thing that, that, that got you going. So how did you find partners that were suitable for you? Well, for, you well, fortunately, I think also, as with other kinds of unusual sexuality, people who have it have a sort of radar for it. So people find you. Right. I never have had any. I've never had to look for never? partners. Where no. did you grow up? I grew up in Denver, Colorado. Okay. Very unlikely. Very unlikely. Well, I'm glad you're saying that because a lot of my listeners are like, "How do I find a partner? How do I know? How do you?" They you have more really, trouble. It really won't be a problem if you're really there. When I, it, it started for me when I was in high school, and a girl a year ahead of me in high school was a cheerleader and couldn't have been a more unlikely partner for yeah. the class nerd. I had uh, somehow decided that there was something about me that was just the thing that she needed. And uh, just the thing that she needed was to be, you know, tied up with scarves and uh, spanked with how a belt before know? having sex. Okay. I have no idea how people right. know, but somehow and she knew we you know. were the guy. And somehow she looked at me and she thought, the cheerleader. It's, it's unlikely, but it's got to be him. Right. And in fact, it, she proposed this before we had. You she know, said, hey, tie me up. She's like 17. Or yeah. Something? And uh, before <laughs> before we uh, actually got around to having conventional sex, uh, we did that as foreplay, and it's pretty much been that way for me ever oh since. Ever. So can you have just traditional sex without any of that, or just doesn't do it for you? Well, sure I could, and have, and de- and have do you guys so. ever? Just, you guys just have regular? No. no? Well, no well, regular. But why would we? I don't know. Just because sometimes you're like, oh, I'm tired. I just don't feel like getting out the whips, the ties, the chains, you know, all stuff. If I'm that tired, I'm really probably not in a mood for sex anyway. Wow, so he's, not, time, he's not a quickie. He's not a fast but trick. sometimes, not quick, but just like 15 minutes maybe, but you don't want to get up. Never, never. Do you have the underbed restraints and all that? I mean, you must have everything. We have a whole room. I'm, oh, you no do. No kids. No kids, right? <laughs> yeah, so we don't have to put anything away. That's and true. It's, it's, it's very convenient for us. And in, in fact, the, what we do for a living really compliments it nicely i mean it supports right. what we do but um it's even whatever even if we do something that for us is like a relative quickie the 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 dominant submissive aspect of it is still there you know you're still wearing right. your collar there are certain little symbolic things that we do so even if what we're doing doesn't appear to be partic- particularly elaborate or unusual it's the headspace from which we're doing it yeah right that, okay that me- that means the most that is the most important part of it so, Nina, have you always been into being the submissive? I don't think I knew no, this about um, you. No, I've always I been. I feel like I knew. I've we always. We talked for an hour. 
I've <laughs> always been into whatever sex is happening in the room with very few exceptions. Obviously, gay men are not going to have me in the room. Right. Heterosexual women are not going to have me in the room. You know, but and for me, my idea of sex is, ooh, naked people, where? How can, right. how can I join in? So when I think of sex, I don't think of having intercourse myself. I think of being in a room with, with sexual energy and seeing where I fit in. Um, I never had a dominant submissive fantasy, but I fell in love with the man, not the role. And uh-huh. so to, to, in order to have sexual attention from Ernest, I needed to learn his love language. Luckily, I'm very, very, I'm a, I'm a um, universal adapter. When it comes to sex, like a stem right. cell. I get it. And so if I like you, if I'm interested in sex with you and you have a particular way of doing it, I'm happy to learn that way in because I'm always fascinated right. with what gets people going like you. It's like, right. oh, wow. Totally. Oh. Yeah. No, so I, I, I'm actually the same way. And so, Some people would think, oh, what is that? Like you're just following. No. It's no, like I'm no. open. I'm open. I'm, I'm open. Like, hey, I'm, never I'm, tried yeah. it. I'm, it's, I'm, it's I'm consen- down. consenting adults. Um, otherwise, you know, uh, no one's cheating. No one is lying. To, we're all here on purpose, right. and we know why we're here. I'm down for anything, within reason. I mean, you know, I have right. some hard limits, but everybody exactly. does. So, turns out that the kind of sex Ernest likes to have is, for me, super swoony, swoon inducing. And for for the oh, he's the only man I've ever slept with that doesn't get boring. Oh my see Every that. other guy, it's like twice and done. Can we I'll, clone him? I'll, like, please, I've been trying. You've never been bored of all the never men, been bored. You, men partners you've and had. I have your a history. lot of I've, men. Yeah, I know, I'm sure a lot of people have <clears> watched you. Have and the mo- and the most exciting men I like to have sex with four times a year, only if I don't talk to them in between time. Right, I tell so you. to yeah. find someone I want, I live with. I so we have a we have a we work together. We're married, and then. The hot sex is just crazy after four. I just crazy. It's crazy. I think that that's amazing Every day, that you it, guys are it, able it to do that amazing. together. It's crazy. I mean, what is the secret then? Well, in our particular case, it just it happens to be that our our, our that our desires align, even though the the template in, in which we with which we express them really comes from me yeah, and from yeah. the from the DS place. But as far as the things that we actually do, we just do a lot of interesting, fun, different things. It's never the same twice. Oh, wait. see, and, that's what I. It's, but think about it. There, there are like the, there are five behaviors: There's hugging and kissing, sucking and fucking, and <laughs> well, hugging, and, tugging, no, 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 there's, 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 there's kissing and hugging and sucking, but it's fucking and, right. and, and, and 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 massage. There's right. five behaviors. There are three orifices for females and two for men, and six groupings. It's all been done, right? So. We, we we hug and we kiss and we suck and we fuck and he right. gives head and everything. But we what, do all those. But what sometimes it, ask me, do you people ever have like regular that's sex? That's what I just asked you. Yeah, yeah well, we do, this, this but we do this play. at right. the same time. Right. So so if, if the average length of sex is 15 minutes, kiss, kiss, hug, hug, he gets erect, they move to intercourse, he comes, maybe she does, they fall asleep. So for so if we play for 90 minutes, there's 20 minutes of looking at porn right. and, and having a drink and there's 20 and then so there's there's sucking and fucking and right. beating and spanking and so we maybe mix it up. So okay, there's, there, it. there's still in 90 minutes of play, there may be 35 accumulated minutes of intercourse, maybe okay. 40 and the rest is other things. Right. So we're just, it's a party. Right. I love, it's a party every time. Yes, it I is. I mean, seriously, you are right now, you have like people listening going, how the hell can I get that? Can I get it, that? Not if they're even into it. To, to it's about, we, it's what we give attention to. We, right. are, we honor. It's learn. It's a set of it learnable is, skills. It is learnable skills. It is a skill so set. what would you tell, because like I said, not everyone's, they always, I mean, I'm, I mean, a million times a day, I woke up this morning, I had three press requests. How do we spice it up in the, I mean, really, like you want to show, well, you should take a vacation, get away from it. But but there's more to it. It's more about communicating and, and discussing and, and picking the right partner that yep. you know is has the same sexual and not blueprint or similar. And not expecting that the new sex spontaneity, mutual lust all the time is going to be able to it, be, be able be able to hold off. Right. When, no, you're going to have to use your imagination in addition to all your other parts. I exactly. mean, it's gonna, that's going to have to be in there. And one thing I would say right at the beginning, um, there is. Not everything that we do and not everything that we know about what we do would be applicable to most people's relationships. If you are not in some way bent in that direction, it's not going to work for you. It's not going to turn you on. However, there is something that is a practice that is part of what we do that I think is adaptable to every kind of relationship, which is negotiated, communicated, understanding in advance of what it is that you want to do. That's the thing that's absolutely necessary. Yes. That's absolutely necessary for what we but, do because it involves safety. Right. You know, it involves people's comfort level and not right. taking them too far out of their comfort zone. A little bit is okay, too much, not okay. Right. So you've got to know all that stuff up front. 
Well, I think that would be a thing that what we call, feel part of the expression, vanilla couples right. could also stand I, to do. I agree. And I feel like there should be some kind of intake form when you start dating someone. Because, yeah. Yes. Because I feel like so many people are mismatched sexually. I mean, because they don't understand that you the first nine months, a year, it's amazing. And then all of a sudden they're like, I feel like every day people wake up and they find out that the world isn't flat. They're like, right. oh my God, I don't know what to do. We've been together. Now we don't have sex anymore. And I'm not attracted to her. She doesn't want her. He doesn't want people, her. I'm like, people, this happens. This is normal. People, this is natural. How do you avoid that? People accept People expect sex to just happen. The media supports that just happening. TV and movies, it just happens. We didn't think about it. Ernest and I think about it. We make, make date nights. So we know that on Friday at 5 o'clock, so in 5 o'clock and 5, or 5 o'clock and 5.30, or whatever time we start, there is the daytime. Then there is setting up the space, setting out the right, smut stuff. Right, ritual. And, and there's, there, a, and there's a ritual, and that really does get you in the space. It does. It does. It's like foreplay. Ritual yeah. isn't sacred. It allows the sacred to emerge. So what we respecting each other is we respect our sexual life together enough to make space for it and give it a full attention right. computers are off phones are off nothing if it's not bleeding or on fire it can wait right exactly turn the phones off people always say that, that they just you know they can't make time because they don't prioritize it I think that people have to start talking about yes. sex very very early on because then you won't have all the, you know if you're mismatched sexually but you've been together and you have kids and the whole thing you don't see how you can get out of it and you're never going to change something if you want it more she want, you decide you want something different and you you can't talk her into having a threesome or having some kind of kink. It's, I don't know. You, you can't talk someone into it. Well, actually, you could try like saying let's watch porn and see what interests you. But these yeah. are the things that you got to figure out before you walk down the aisle, before you make a commitment. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, like, what, like you know, I try to tell people to talk about it, but people are so uncomfortable talking about sex, which is they why are. they're emailing me with a ten page letters. I'm like, what? Talk to your partner. They can't. They don't. And we I don't just, give people well, the skills. Uh, the, well, the thing is that with the kind of sex that we do with BDSM sex, you don't have the option of not communicating. Right. There are risks involved. In fact, there are various terms to describe right. what it is we do. The current one, yep. the currently trending one, is called risk-aware consensual kink. Okay. Or rack for rack. short. I like, I like it. that. Okay. Got a nice ring to it. Before that, it used to be safe, sane, and consensual. But I always thought the word sane. Yeah. Sure I'm not, you know, people. Look, right. people who wear latex in July, I don't know, <laughs> you know, and think it and think it's good, think it's right. fun. I don't know. You know I've lived in San Francisco for 20 years. I'm like, yeah, who doesn't yeah, okay. wear latex in July? So, but no, I get what you're but saying. As far, but, but what as you far do as is the, we're going to get. I get that. As, yeah, of course. As far as the awareness that's necessary to do this safely and to do this in a manner that's not psychologically harmful and that isn't going to get you arrested, you really do have to sit down and go through that questionnaire. You don't have the choice of not confronting the question of what's okay and what isn't okay. Right. Then, after you've gotten those boundaries laid down, within those boundaries, you've got incredible freedom because you know where those limits are and right. anything inside of them is okay. Right, exactly. So what if someone, a couple's just starting out and they're thinking, God, you know, I just would like to tie up my, my partner or I'd like to blindfold her or him and... How do you... There's a lot of terrific literature out there. Believe me, the world has changed greatly since when I began in all of this. There's lots of good stuff to read. There's lots of good stuff and bad stuff online. That has become, in my opinion, our greatest challenge is how we are going to deal I with know. the huge influx of people who are fascinated by this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, anybody can represent themselves as anything in that situation. You don't have to prove as you did when, when I got in. Right. You had to sort of prove that you were at least serious about learning how to do right. it safely and correctly. Now you don't have to prove anything. If you can convince someone to go along with it, you can right. probably you know, get them to do that, and the results might be okay, or they might be not okay. So we have some challenges of our own. I mean, when I first joined an SM group in Los Angeles, which was at that time the preeminent Los right. Angeles SM group, it had 64 members. This was back in 1983. Well, by the time I eventually had been, you know, head of that group for six terms, it had, gr it had grown to 750 members, and I thought that was a kind of an unwieldy number. That's a lot. That's what, a year? Lot of people, what year are we talking about? Yeah, by the time 1987 or 88 rolled around, it suddenly, be, well, you know, after Madonna came along and started wearing her underwear on stage, everything changed. It changed the world. Um, and all kinds of people got interested in this thing, and it became a dynamic idea right. that attracted a lot of attention, and some of the attention was good, and some of the attention was not good. Some of the people it attracted were just right for it, and thank heaven they what found it. What was going it. on in this group? Was this, these <clears throat> your partners in the group, or well, was it no, more about were, supporting it, each other? It, it was actually mostly about education. It was about learning techniques, because there is a technical aspect to this. If you're going to, to do BDSM sex in a way that's going to be mutually satisfying, there are things that you need to learn how to do. Like, like break it down, like if you're a beginner. Well, if you're a beginner, the first thing you need to, to learn how to do is to get access to one another's fantasies. What do you picture yourself doing? What role do you picture yourself in? What sounds like it would be exciting? 
Then you begin to address the practical questions of how much of that fantasy can you actually make real within your skill level. Now, you have the advantage these days of being able to attend all kinds of seminars and events and courses and so on and so forth where people who have been doing this for years can show you how to do the thing that you want to do. Right. But you will still have to focus on acquiring the skills necessary. I used to teach a lot of bondage workshops because one of the things I used to do is rig bondage professionally right. for, for, for photographs and so on. And I would start out with a, you know, a room full of bright-eyed, interested young folk. <laughs> right. And I'd have all this gear and junk laid out on the table in front of me, all kind of ropes and chains and stuff. And I'd say, so, you want to do some bondage? What is the first thing you need? Is it this? And I'd hold up some rope. and they, Nope, not that. Put it down. How about this? I'd hold up a pair of handcuffs. Nope, not that. What you need is this. And then I'd hold up a pair of paramedic scissors. I'd say the first thing you need to know is how right, to get people out, out of things right. very first. quickly. If, somebody's, if somebody starts to feel anxious, if they start to feel uncomfortable in any way, you got to get them out of there first. So think ahead. You have to learn to think ahead. Is the, the sweet spot in BDSM is that place where your instincts, your physiological desires, and your skills all come together. Because they all have to be working together for it to really be a quality experience. Right. Okay. That's good. That's good for starting out. Like people who are, what if they're just basic, that they're thinking, you know, okay, I got to bring a Fifty Shades of Grey. I knew you would. I, I knew we were going there. I had to. I had to. I had to. And I, and I hate, and I thought on the way over, I don't want to, but I am. Because that's just, I think now it's become part of the consciousness. It's, part, it's been part of the, the national discussion. That women, and I don't know so much that, that they want that. It's more about, I mean, some might. They might be thinking, God, I wish that my partner would do this. And I don't know how to talk to him about it. Right. It's not that I want a dungeon. It's not that I want like what you guys have at your house, which I'm sure is amazing. It but is. But it's just a little bit. Like maybe it's banking or, a, you know, how do you communicate that? Uh, by asking. You know, I, I, one of my earlier partners said, how do, you, how do you have such tremendous success getting people to do this? Getting, getting <laughs> he gave women, women not doing, people, women. He's women, heterosexual. Getting, yes, I am. Relentlessly. <laughs> Um, you know, how do you get so many women to do this? I said, I ask them. Right. You know, it really it's surprising when you put put it to people in you know as one intelligent person to another. Have you ever considered doing this? And would you be interested? You'd be surprised how many say, Yeah, I've actually thought about it a few times and kind of wondered about it. Okay, well, that's the be- curiosity is the beginning. Well, this is the thing, okay? Because I have a question for you. Because I, because you, you said that most most women, most partners say yes. Yes. Okay. I get turned down. I've gotten turned down, you know, three, four times in my life. No, come on. It's no, but I was reading stuff about 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 the story of O, and uh-huh. and they said that the themes in this book depict the true nature of women. No, they and do so not. I want to say that that's what like one of the people who were on the book, one of the critics, and do you, so. I'm, but I'm asking. You've had so many women who are consensual. Do you think not that so many women want to be into BDSM, but they want to be dominated? I think some do and some don't. I absolutely think it's – I don't think it's gender-related. In fact, you know, gender politics pours my ass off. It has nothing to do with anything. One of the things I really liked about the SM community when I first got into it was, was that it was the first place I ever was where gender carried no behavioral expectations whatsoever. You know, that we had dominant men and submissive women. We had dominant women and submissive men. We had uh, dominant transvestites. We had all kinds of things. No, I know. All but kinds just, of odd But, but odd I guess I'm talking about, like, the, sto- the story of O, that that yeah. was like, this, this quintessential well, there like, were the, female. Well, there are those who want to believe that, and I, you know, I reject those politics. Okay. I, in fact, but, I think those I mean, are, I I th- I think those I are dangerous politics. I, I agree. I totally agree. I was wondering what you thought. So what – so when you – do you remember when you first read the story of O? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I certainly do. I read it when I was about 15. I got it uh, through the mail from Grove Press. Yay, Barney Rossett. His <laughs> spirit is with us today. Um, and I read it, and I found it absolutely riveting and fascinating and you know, couldn't put it down, which, of course, since it's only 200 pages long, you don't have right. to put it down. You can get it done in about a day. And then at the end of it, I threw it against the wall. It was like, what? That's what we were leading right. up to? Right. Because I'm not going to – it's, no, it's right. no spoiler to tell you that it has no end. I can't possibly spoil the end for you because there isn't one. Um, they it, it, basically this. If you know the history of how it was yeah. written, it was never intended to be published. So right. basically, at some point, the author kind of just ran out of steam on it and it couldn't get the act off stage, and so they have a kind of Michael O'Donohue, and then they were all run over by a truck kind of ending. So oh. it's, it's really, it's just really. It, the book has some great things about it, and it has some things that are very frustrating. The characters are not well developed. The female characters are, are, are better developed than the male characters, and but that's not saying much because the male characters are absolutely cardboard cutouts. There's okay. nothing – there is nothing about the two men to whom O gives herself as a slave that would make any sense at all 
right. to, any, like, why would to she... any rational person. Right. What would make either of these guys attractive to that degree? Well, there probably was something, but bear in mind that the person who wrote that book didn't much like BDSM. Right. They didn't right. call it, they call it sadomasochism. It was, just, it was a kind of a challenge, right? It was like a love right. letter, right? She was in love with a guy who was into it. Right. And she was not. And what she basically said, they were both writers. And she said, well, I can't do the things that right. you like to do, but I can right. write the kind of book that you like to read. And so she wrote it for him as a birthday present, read it to him. And then being as he was a, an author of some repute, he more or less, and things being as they were in France at that time, he said, nope, it must be published. And it was she was like, but, but. And the right. next thing you knew, it was published. It was published, right. Yes. Okay, so then what about Master of O? So did you, how much did you change the characters and how much did you change the, it's from the male perspective. Yes. Because you felt the male characters were underdeveloped? Did I you thought feel, they were and dreadful. They were cardboard. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I, and, I read it so long ago. So unappealing. You know, there was nothing right. about them that anyone would like, much less want to do all the things that she did for them. So I wanted to provide some kind of a, of, of a more believable example of a more complex kind of personality who happens to be dominant, likes that kind of sexuality, and who would attract a high-powered capable, accomplished woman of the type that O was in the original book. Right. I think that 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 O, of all the characters in my book, um, is the most similar to the original you know, model than any of the others. The others are all completely different. Right. I mean, the guys are completely different. Um, but there were certain things about O that were recognizable as a personality type that I would encounter later in life. You know, a lot of the people who prefer to play in the submissive role and prefer to, their sex to be in the submissive role are extremely high-powered, right. driven, ambitious, you know, very, very orderly kinds of personalities right. with, with a clear plan for everything. That's the kind of person who really needs a vacation. Exactly. They need they an hour and a half sex. vacation Just, from that. You take that. care of it. I totally understand. Yep. That's they, they, they need to let go of the wheel for a minute so somebody else can drive. And right. that's basically what, what you get to do. So I really wanted that character, I wanted the character of O to be, I wanted it to be very, very clear. Very clear that, that this was what she, that this was what she was all about. Consensual. Right. And in fact, she Which was all about different. it herself. She lived a fetishistic life. Right. On, even when she was unpartnered. It was just part of who, it was part of her identity. And then she met a guy who was kind of like that too. A hard driving, successful guy who and was based just in modern all about day Los this. Angeles. Yes, right? said in modern day I Los love Angeles, that. which has a which has some similarities to Paris in 1953. It's a place of self reinvention. People come here to become somebody that they weren't before, and yeah. there are a whole lot of people out here doing. Still that. happening every day, right? Well, in Paris in 1954 was kind of like that. They'd had a rough uh, right. ten years or so before that, and there were a lot of people who really wanted to kind of be somebody other than whoever they were before that. So uh, as France emerged as it had not really been before as a center of popular culture, film, fashion, uh, journalism, all kinds of stuff of, of right. that kind. And indeed, it's no accident that in both books, in Story of O and in Master of O, O is a in, in, in my book, of course, she's a, uh, a pornographic photographer. Okay. But in the original, she was a fashion photographer, but for the time. You know, the connection was still there. Right. Uh, and there's there's an interesting sequence in the original where she does a photo shoot uh, for fashion purposes and she sees, for the first time, having had the experience herself, the fetishistic implications of fashion. That when, right, you know, absolutely. That, you know, when she, that when she puts a ribbon choker around a model's neck, it might be a collar, you know, that she sees this now with new eyes. Right. So... So I, how much did you did you read? Were you like did you read the story of Ogan? Go back and forth. Or it was more like you just took the basic because I I'm going to fully admit that I've not read it yet because and I'm very upset about it. I'm going to read it like tomorrow, which is why I'm like, it's nine hundred pages it. long. You're not going to oh, read it. I tomorrow. can't read it tomorrow. Can I, can people can download it though. Master of Yes, dot com. Matthew, yes. you can download they, they, it tonight. Quick, okay, good. I don't feel so bad because I was out of time. No, mastervo.com, mastervo.com. Just go download it now because you got amazing reviews on it on your site and everything. And we're going to read a little excerpt in in a, in a little bit. Um, but so, how much did you did you change the story? Like, was it more like just going off the story? Was it like more modern day BDSM? Do you think it's changed? A oh, lot? I think it's changed a great deal. I how think is, for, how so? For, well, one thing that I really disliked about the original book, and it was not necessarily the author's fault. It was something that was imposed in an introduction written by the guy who. Right. made her publish it you know, it was his dismissal of the idea that there was any physical pleasure for the submissive partner exactly in this thing. that's what I, okay. that it, was, it was all about you know giving it up for love that you suffered to love you were a martyr to love 
Oh boy, Cal- nobody. That's so that's different. Just, I mean, yeah. right? Because she was you, you, she has discernible pleasure in this. Yes, she, let, she wants it. She's desire, she Yeah, she has. It. You could say she has the discernible pleasure. Oh my god, pleasure that's what every I've read. I mean, I've read everything about. I mean, today I've been like obsessed. I every mean, three pages, years. she has discernible right. pleasure. Her so whole life is I about that. Exactly. No, these are very hedonistic characters, and they really enjoy themselves. Let me tell you, nobody ever took a second whipping out of love. Nope. How long did it take? No, how long did it take you to write the book? One year, exactly. Exactly. Like, and what's your writing style? Is it every every day? You sit and write? Yes, I am one of those. You know, you're some disciplined re- like that. No, it isn't that it, some people who have to discipline themselves to write are like people who have to discipline themselves to do SM. They should probably take up another hobby. Right. That's if true. I were one of those people who found writing difficult, I'd do something else. Right. So you've always like found it. it. Yeah, you like it. You enjoy it. You sit. Do you have like a I room did. that you sit in? And yeah. You- and it's it, yeah, it's actually my my desk is in our play space, oh, so I can look up and you know there it all is to remind me in case I've forgotten. But uh, really writing this was a lot of fun <laughs> because I got to use a lot of bits and pieces of a lot of people I really knew from that I world. Nina? She's in yeah. there? Yes, she's in there in a, in, 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 in a, in a role that's I, – I, what I did was I cast against type. She's in there playing a role that's really not much like her. And uh, I did I did that with lots of people. There there are some recognizable there folks in there. Of people who really there's some recognizable people. If you know who they are, you'll recognize them. And it's interesting that when some of them were asked to blurb the book, there was a sort of moment of right. discomfort when they said, mm, it's "Sort of familiar, but okay, right. I'll do it anyway." Was that me? Was that you? I know you've had a lot of partners. Okay, when we come back, we're going to hear from Nina. Um, I just got some words from our sponsors here. We want to keep this show free. And I just would would be great if you could support our sponsors. Let me tell you about Permescent. Did you know one in three men suffers from premature ejaculation? Well, now you don't have to. Permescent is a quickly absorbing delay spray that allows you to have the sex you want. You don't even have to think about baseball or your great Aunt Margaret with the furry mustache. You can focus on your partner's hot body, especially now that you have the time to make her orgasm or him orgasm. Also, Permescent closes the arousal gap between men and women. You might get there faster than she would like. So Permescent helps you last twice as long. Thousands of urologists are recommending Permescent, the only FDA-approved treatment for premature ejaculation. Go to Permescent. Dot com to find out more. That's Promescent, P-R-O-M-E-S-C-N-T dot com. It's not rising to the top. That's a challenge. It's staying there. Also, our sponsors, which you guys can wreck it, which you guys, I'm sure, are familiar with, is Good Vibrations. Oh, yeah. Yay! We love Good Vibrations. So one of the reasons, again, you're able to listen for free is because of the incredible people at GoodVibes.com. They carry all the best sex toy brands. You can get the Rabbit Habit from Vibratex, the Fun Factory Amarino, which is one of my new faves, um, a Pocket Rocket. You can even get the strongest, most orgasmic vibrator of all time, the Magic Wand. Uh, use code GVEMILY for 20% off or yeah. go to my Ooh. site, sexwithemily.com. Click on the Good Vibrations banner to see my favorite toys. You know I've tried them all. <laughs> That's goodvibes.com. Coupon code GVEMILY20. Thanks again, everyone, for supporting my sponsors. Awesome. You've been Good very sponsors. involved with Good Vibes, too. I know, right? If I hadn't been, again, if I had not been exhibitionistic enough for porn, I would have gotten a job there. Yeah, I they know. they started when I was 18, and I just loved the idea of them all along. I love they're, yeah, yeah. They're, they're they're amazing. So go buy some toys today, and we're get, we got some callers coming in. So we've oh, got some cool. We'll Bring them on. So we've got the first the first call. Hello, Justin. Hey. Hey, Justin. How you doing? I'm doing great. Calling from Virginia tonight. How can I help you? You're on okay. with um, Ernest Green, Nina Harley, and myself. We're all here to help you. All right. Um. So I was hanging out with one of my ex girlfriends today, and after the fact that I kissed her, she tells me that she had contracted herpes from one of her ex-boyfriends after we broke up. Okay. And I didn't know if I could contract it from mouth-to-mouth contact or would I have to have, uh, like... Genital contact. I mean, if she was having an inflammation, I mean, she but she has genital herpes, correct? Yeah. Okay. I mean, if she wasn't, the chances are you probably didn't contract it if you didn't have sex with her? If you didn't have intercourse with her, you wouldn't no. get it just from from kissing her. No, but you know, you if you you have to take necessary measures. If obviously, if you do have sex with her, but unless she was having, you know, cold sores or there was some kind of breakout in her mouth, I you don't run the risk. Okay. I'm yeah. Just making sure. Yeah, I think you're good. Anything else, Nina, that you guys want to add to that? Do you know what I mean? I think that's that's pretty um, straightforward, I, I except for... Just, you know, look before you leap. Another right. reason to have sex with the lights on. Any, yeah. broke, any broken skin, just do something else that night. Right. It doesn't matter. Even if it's, quote, unquote, only a shaving bump, an open skin is open skin. Don't have sex with exactly. any, any right. sores, cuts, abrasions. 
nicks, anything like yeah, that. Yeah, you should be investigating it ahead right. of time. So that's what I say to you, Justin. No worries. I think you're fine. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. Sure. Thanks so much for calling. Okay, so I wasn't ready for that screen. at all. Why? No, because it wasn't about your book. I know people just call in with questions yeah, sometimes. Well, you know, it happens. You but know, I can answer that question, though. It's, it's, I know you could. I figured, you know, hey. I wanted to ask a question. Oh, go ahead, I'll Anderson. Ask a question. Ernest, when you meet people, yes. do you size them up immediately and say, like, uh, that guy's a bottom or a top or, like, submissive? I mean, do you do you try and feel like Emily and doing the show with her tonight? Yeah, like, what do you think about me? Am I you think life? she wants to be in charge? I think you're a switch. Really? Yep. Depending on your partner. Depending on your partner. I'm not. I'm not. A t- I've never taught. I would. Le- I have a partner that I've been with that wanted me to be more dominant, and I just. I've never done it. I don't think it would be your natural inclination, no. but I think if you could see that it actually was pleasing to the person you were doing it with, and that you could acquire the necessary skill set to do it very easily, I think you'd enjoy. You'd it's enjoy on my it. list. Because let me tell you, if you're a giving person, this I is what am. I always say: you're a giving person. I. Li- <clears throat> I like to think that if you are that kind of dominant, the fact that it is obviously pleasing to your partner is reason enough to do it. Exactly. You know, I so yeah, it. so I, w- I would say that you would probably and be he able does, to he, no, 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 don't let him lie to you. He has kink dar. There's a line in the book that I, I will let the people read, but I will, we both like looking at women and I, he's 100% kinky. I'm 40% kinky, 40% poly and 20% vanilla. Okay. So I, I'm a more, I have a wider palette of sex. But you've got that pretty broken down. Pretty do you still much. have sex with other people? Oh, yeah. Do you oh, yeah. Have threesomes? Threesomes, and, and then we each have solo partners. Um, cause so I, you're I, a need, I need I need some vanilla on the side. Right. But he said, <laughs> we're, so we're, he, we're non-monogamous. That was a condition. Right. right. It had so, to be there. So he has and it works. Dark. People it works. never think it works, people. Oh, it works it for us. Work. It, work, it works if that is your orientation. Exactly. So you have to be I'll look at a beautiful woman on the street that I know physically the type that he would go for. Right. And he'll look at her and go, oh, nice, because she doesn't, he can tell if the woman has that energy, the aura. Right. The, 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 you the, could do have the kink dog. He, he has kink dog. Yeah. I don't. I, I'm like a puppy. Hi, naked people wear. Right. And he's like, nah, her. Yep. Of, and of, he's of, and you're right. You nail and, it. And he nails it. And, and then you nail her. Maybe. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. I don't know. And, I, and I'll help. <laughs> right. Right. I love that. You guys. I like playing the amazing. torture. I like play. See, so when we're, I'm a, again. I'm a. I'm a. Uh, a stem cell so I adapt to my partner's energy so when we're alone I'm always playing from the submissive role and I really like it. it's very personal romantic what do intimate. you like about it I like it's like a constant it's always a romance novel cover where she, she's swooning and he's his big bad self it's like oh it's, it's like he's reading your mind so the sex we have is always like that first time sex just taken away oh my gosh so how aggressive how, how intense is it oh it's intense like, I, okay. I, I'm, I'm masochistic there's there's whipping caning beat uh, beating air quotes all consensual all this is, not, right, this is right. not this is hitting with implements designed to hit bodies with so right. uh, le- uh, leather whips uh, riding crops uh, rattan canes um, his hand sometimes sometimes um, a loose fist let me tell you a butt is a lot tougher than a hand Your yeah, hand yeah. Will for sure. wear out first. absolutely yeah. um, so I, I like our BDSM is violence without anger and pain without fear mm-hmm. so it is very air quotes violent he pushes me around. He hits me. He shoves me against things. But it is like a dance, like in a posh dance. Have you ever been hurt? Um, no, no, actually. One time you bruised me. I was just having him in such a space. And he he stopped before yeah, I wanted I, to. Usually I'm the one who says, no, nah, I think that's enough of that. I'm right. rare. He's, in 14 years, you've marked me more than an hour twice. So he wow. So he, never any marks or bruises? Because I had a guy slap my ass once, like four times, and I had a bruise. Well, but it was people, just very casual. You know, some people hurt me more easily. But than also, and also, don't forget, you know how boxers' hands get tough enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, you get tough. You, you get you tough. You can get to iron it. butt. Called right. iron butt. Oh, iron butt. Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, there's like squats there, at the gym there, and stuff. There are, yeah. There are, there are some women I've been with who you, really I you was quite sure. That the next, and I said, you know, you want to even Monday, Monday, Mon- Mon- Monday's play date. You thought for sure she an, an hour later, clean as a no. Je- okay, so no, can we talk about the jealousy thing here? Not like, no, you're like, yeah, Monday's play date. So you came home and told her about it, and you're cool. No, no we, no, had, no, it we together. had it together. Oh, the two of you. Okay, yeah. I thought there was someone else you were, yeah. you were with. Then. No, no. So, so the way that we are, when I first got with him, the condition upon relationship was non monogamy because I dealt with that my first marriage. Right. And, no. So not cut out for it. Not no. cut out for it. And he that does not he's loyal he is as a, a fierce he's fiercely in love with me but it's not for us we don't not we do not need we don't need our sex to be always in the same body as our romance right now sex with him alone is clearly the best of the best absolutely but Thank um, you. you know you know you're cut out for non monogamy if the st- statement the more the more people I fuck the more I love my partner make sense to you yeah anybody can be fun once or once in a while but fun all the time that's a special person 
I can have fun with anybody once. Right. Exactly. Ooh, who are you? Hey, new body. We, right. You know, or four times a year. Yeah. So that is just, that's just a chemist. That's the and luck I just, of the draw. And it's I chemistry. Was just, I was just born without the jealousy I he- gene. I just don't I know, know what I it is. I do too. It's funny. I, healed, I had I to heal mine it. to have the life I wanted. He never had it. When right. Pe- when people are jealous, when they tell me, oh, I'm kind of a jealous person, I ask them this one question. Tell me one thing in all of human history, one good thing that's come about as a result of someone being jealous. I can't think of one myself. I mean, I, don't, I, I fail to see it as a productive aspect of right. anything about human nature. I never liked but it. But I hear I people who will, will act, make their partner a little bit jealous to get their partner's attention. Yes. And that's, so that's all the mate guarding and the mate, mate guarding bullshit. Right. And I, they're the difference between love and lust. And so the... The companionship and intimacy you have with a long term partner is very great. easy to get my attention. You don't have to go to all that trouble. Right? No, right. It's just you know. <laughs> but so people say, and people, what I love about being married to a fetishist is I, I know that if I want behavior B, I will do behavior A. And if I do A, I'll get B. If I want C, I'll do D. It's really simple. And you simple. feel like all of your sexual needs are getting taken care of? Um, I am partly because. Partly because we're not monogamous, so right because so you're the, you're more you're bisexual. I'm bisexual. I do like having vanilla sex. I do like sometimes being a, in charge, and he does not switch. He's a heter- he's heterosexual, not straight, and he does not switch. I'm a top heavy switch. Right. You know, I don't need to beat boy butt, but I'm not saying I don't like it. Right. Sometimes. So how often are you guys with other people? Um, ideally, um, we would have month. ideally we'd have one threesome a month and a solo date each a month. Yeah. So after, okay. four, after 14 years, we still, we make room for sex once a week. And we, we value that. We put, we prioritize that instead, lot of, of, yes. instead of movies, instead of going to the museum. Right, and, let me also say, and let me also say that we have this knack, and I, maybe it comes something, there's something work related in it, but whatever <laughs> it is, um, when we get down to doing it, we become strangers to each other. That's part of the appeal of it, you know. Of the yeah. BDSM, yeah. Is it, right? Is that I? I become, you know, I I become the the dominant partner. She becomes the submissive partner. Now we are different people than the people right. who were sitting in the living room. And we don't talk a lot during during our sex. It's not a, so, some dominants use the, use, the, use words. Right. Oh, I weird. hate that. He is more. He's more. <laughs> he's using. He's using my body to help me go where I want to go. Right. And where do you want to go? Um. I I like feeling my partners. I like my partners to be their bad selves, to be fully themselves. And so and I, that's what I, turns like, you I like that you know that. Right. That I like to welcome that. I like to make it okay for that person to, to, to step up into that space. And he's someone who is absolutely fine with who right. he is. It's no, like, I'm, so not, I'm not your barking part? kind of so dog. So do you have intercourse? Like, do oh, fuck, oh, fuck after, so, fuck after, so, um, so after, during. Walk me through a session. Okay. Um, uh, Even though they're not all the same. No. 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 no but the, the basic temple is the same. So. Um, a basic sesh. Um, there's pornography set out. He pours me a drink. What uh, kind of we, porn? Um, illustrated, uh, single, single. Really um, twisted. Really twisted, sick, evil. Really dark. Cartoons. Cartoons? So, drawings, yeah. drawings. Right, so, okay. so you don't have to worry about anyone's shoulders porn. or does it, no. you know, it's not a real person. I don't worry about somebody being hurt. In fact, right. I, I edited a cartoon magazine yeah, that yeah, is this so, type in which so we, we say no actual tunes were harmed in the making of these comics. Right. So, and so the setting ups, I set up the room, there's going to be lube and baby wipes Lots and gloves and the vibrators already stung. Right. And Which vibrator? A magic wand. Um, yeah, of course. But, you, and but you will be collared. You will be cuffed. I will. I will wear. I, I wear collar. Uh, my my collar cuffs and um, high heels. Do you put them all on yourself? Yeah, I do. So and then what do you wear? Except to wear for the nothing. collar, I put that on he, her. He puts a collar on me because that's a romantic thing. He kisses right. the back of my neck and oh. locks the collar on, and then right. we. And he puts on his riding boots and his little, you know, envelope cap made of leather. We drink the drink we yeah you could laugh at this drink, stuff like folks. Um, I, I like a single malt scotch so I'm, I'm, a, I'm good for one I'm okay. more, I'm, I don't drink I have a, yeah, okay. I have a, I have a limit of one drink okay and we're so, so but one, once once the hat goes on and the porn comes out then all the discipline is all conversation is about sex so if I think about oh god that thing next week no, nope. that gone. has to wait. You have to replace it, which no, is no, no. which is just a good tool. For is it a cool? Yes, sex. this requires absolutely. Sex. to do this well requires focus and concentration. Right, right. And, so and, you can't really be thinking about next week while you're doing it and have a good right, time. Exactly. And, and that's I wish time. that most so people as would transfer that into just regular. Right, but so, I, so as we, so what what so for what we can so um um so all the the sex and then because of the role structure, um he may say you know. Would you like X, X, X? It's not really a question. My answer is yes, sir. Right. You know, but unless- that doesn't mean she can't make suggestions. Would you 
find it amusing if I were to do such right. and such. So, you, so one thing, what keeps it fresh is you learn how to speak in a way that gives me full agency right. without breaking the the role. This is the ultimate role play. Right, it so is. So he, he's in charge and I'm, he's Fred and I'm Ginger. Well, Ginger can communicate. So I can't say, hey, Ernest, you know, scratch my back. But right. I, can, I can say, would sir like to see? Yes. And if he says yes, then that's a yes. And if he says no, drop it. Right. And so, and so, learn, so for me, the emotional practice of learning how not to argue within the scene right. that took a minute. So the, the, what I like about plays, I mean, what I like about the role playing is that it, it forms very firm fences within which to roam. And so then we get out of the living room, walk back to the. I have, may have a butt plug in, but they put it in a lewd manner. Which butt plug do you like um, these days? Um, my favorite one died. Um, oh. I don't even know the I have a name. <laughs> in your butt? Are, no, I hope almost, not. Uh, but no. Um, the the secret is to everything is permitted except modesty. As 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 as, right. as a, so so my job as, as a is. my job mm-hmm. as a air quote sex slave consensual the game right um is that lewdness is so I'm, I'm supposed to want to get some I, my job is to be horny and into right. sex so i get to i'm free so of, if i walk her back from the from the living room let's say to you walk the, her to on the play a, space no oh. i hold my collar and right. I, I, yeah i might hold her collar or i might have hold her arms behind mm-hmm. her and of course she's gonna you know some right. there are some kinds of dominance who really i don't know what their problem is but they don't like any kind of uh, of uh, initiative on the part of right. their submissive partners, and they're missing out. No, I don't no, to get her some. Ma- exactly. Right. I've told her that her number one duty as a slave is to get some. Right. So right. if I happen to be, you know, be standing behind her, holding her arms, and her hands are still available, she'll use them. Right. Uh, oh well. <laughs> yeah. What well, might happen? Exactly. Oh my gosh. And, and I will not find <clears throat> it. So okay. so yeah. in the back so. Um, Nina? The, yes. You said you put the uh, butt plug in in a lewd manner and you didn't expand. What do you mean by that? Um, well, I'll sprawl on my back on the couch and I'll lube it up and I'll lift right. my leg and hold my butt cheek up and watch it go in. And I'll dab the lube off with a baby right. wipe and oh, sit down. And Ernest is watching this yes. whole. That's this whole part of the which is oh, and, yeah. and and yeah. and, then, and then that that's pre drink and pre porn. So, <laughs> so so already it's like hee hee and I've cleaned up my butt and, and right. there's a pre flight checklist. How do you clean it out? Um, I use a butt. I call it butt squeegee, but a um, bulb syringe. Um, you don't do not need to do an enema. No, we're not, no we're enemas. Not, People have just been asking a lot lately. No, no, like just yeah. clean out a lot of uh, high fiber diet and a lot of water, so you have reg- so that part of your body is happy and regular. Um, and then rinse out a few pieces that might be left, and it's a finger's length or a dick's length. It's fine. Right. Um, and then so, but the sex is we. I, I'm masochistic. I like being hit with things, and right. so and. What he does in what order, it's, that's up to him. And you but never know what's coming. No. That's the fun part. No, right, I, that I, is I, why I it's always it. different. I don't really have an agenda. I usually go in there and see what it's like seems, an art. seems like. Yeah. It, you know, what some seems days appealing. it's a cane. Some days it's a whip. Some days it's a cane and the whip. Some days it's a horse. Some days it's a suspension. Some days it's being bounced against the wall. I mean, And are you getting more and more turned on? Oh, with for each sure. Because right. he, he's a massively good cunnilinguist. Well, <laughs> oh, so you're stopping and doing oh, cunnilinguist? Sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, cunnilinguist and fucking. It's a little fucking, a little whipping, a little I bondage, like, okay, a little see, fucking, I like a little the, the little A little flatio. You mix, you mix yeah. it up. A little flatio, a little fucking, a little whipping, a little cunnilinguist, a little f- fucking. You right, know, the, see, and this is what I'm saying is that people, what if you're just like vanilla but you want to introduce a little role play? How would you suggest that to people? I would, I would start with, um, you can have, you know, a bowl with, with roll. So, you know, Often role play has oh, to do just... has to do with power dynamic. Absolutely. Teacher student, cop and DD, doctor patient. So basically, in role play, someone is we're agreeing that you're taking the lead, yeah. and we're agreeing that I'm taking the follow, and that within reason, I'm probably going to say yes. Yeah. But you know what not to ask me, so you don't get a no. So you're not going to ask me, right? So that's that limit thing. So yep. I know so. It's the being good dominant is giving the right orders and the right oh, yeah, orders the, the right the right orders are Order finding people out, to do what they want. Right. They'll always agree, they'll they'll be right. very obedient. So I like that idea. To just pick it. People like, oh, am I going to come home and I'm just going to become become a nurse and he's going to no be, no pick it out. I like that and then just play yeah. with it and go with it. You might laugh at first, but just start. It's just, it's just a way of having <clears throat> sex with like kind of like having sex. With someone, yeah, but is it, you know, changing it, it up. It's not arbitrary for us. I mean, if you are, if you I get have, you guys are different. I'm just yeah, talking about people for who people who are real who are really drawn to BDSM sexuality and DS sexuality <clears throat> they're usually pretty much even people who switch are usually pretty much one way or the other right. they prefer to be in one role or the other and generally are better at it you know you're right you you do best the thing that you like best right so this is the thing that i like best and generally you know listen we start out with 
we start out sometimes with some kissing, fuck, with no, some, yeah, make, kissing make, making, out, making out on the couch sure. and heavy petting. I yes, love it. you we know? always do that. So right. I mean, but and also, also he. But when we get when we get in there, sometimes you know, I'll just uh, I'll have a writing crop under my arm, and I'll have you get up on the bed and I'll, on the bondage bed, and I'll give you a few whaps on the ass. But do you ever then, feel like no, I'm not we'll ha- really that, want to right now? No. Um, I'm period, if we, I'm if either one of us tired. doesn't want to, we just don't do it. We don't do it at all. Because I'll tell you something. We have to have you read the yeah. Were you going to say something? Okay, yeah. Well, all I was going to say is that you really have to be in the mood to do this because it really requires some concentration. If yeah, you're not absolutely. focused, you can't do it. Which is the best kind of things in life is when you when you are focused and in the moment. That's the kind of And one thing, right. let me Across tell you one, one, one thing about being a dominant guy that's sort of challenging is that you need to be able to keep a heart on while you're fiddling around with ropes and whips and stuff. So How you do have, you do that? You, well, you've got to focus, focus. On, you've got to focus <laughs> on the sexual aspect of it. You've got to be t- – your inner movie is saying – Everything I'm doing here is leading up to something that's going to feel right. really good. Right, that's you nice. know, and if, if you can and keep that that secret. going, you're good. As a submissive, uh, playing from the <clears> submissive <throat> role, my job is to be in the eternal now. His job is three steps ahead. Mm-hmm. The submiss- exactly, the Which dominant is so nice to be like just let it all go. The dominant sets the agenda. The submissive sets the tone, the mood. Right. Okay. You know, am I and and some and depending on the day, some days I'm really strong, meaning I really like. I'm. I can take more beating than other days. Right. I am generally masochistic. I like, str- and that does not mean I like pain. It's not right. pain. No, it's not, if you it's experience not pain, it's as, pain, it's not pleasure. It's not pain. pain right. It's not being done it's right. Pleasure. It's intensity. Hey guys. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of pain, uh, safe word. Yeah. Well, have you guys every, use the same safe word over and over? We again? Don't you want to know something funny about that? I have over the years had many partners with to whom I have given safe words, and I've never heard one used. I mean, you're good. Very, at it. No, right. no, he, no, no. Wow. People really very rarely go that far. The thing is, the the public confusion about this is that it's about pain. No, it's not about pain. It's about pleasure. So when are you going to use your safe word when you're having fun? You know, for as long as it still feels good, right. you're not going to use it. That's a good it. testament to your skills. But you I'll, know, you, know, you might say uh, yellow when your foot's going to sleep. Yeah, because right. You, right. Something red, yellow, green. Things things do happen. I mean, yeah, something turns out to be my a job. Bit my job as a submissive is not. It's not being a doormat. It is a verb. Submit is a verb, and so passivity is not welcome. So he says. Uh, Ernest says discomfort should never distract from the torture. So if my foot's asleep, I'm all in my foot. I can't. I don't care what you're doing to my vulva. Right. So I need to. I need to. I need to say, sir, right. my foot. Right. Yes. And the and the smart dominant will go. One moment, please. Okay. And he will re. He'll get it to go. You fix that. Right. And That's you, your then, job. Yeah. And you go and you get back. But to there's it. also okay. something there. You know, there is uh, one thing I like to say is that if you know one of it, to know one of us is to know one of us. We're all different, right? That's and, true too. And and I'm a particular kind of dominant. That's you know I see other kinds around. There's a certain sort, and I'm unfortunately I think they've been influenced by popular media who believe <laughs> that what they need to be is you know stern right. and mean, disapproving, and withholding, be, yeah. and, and not you acting like they're having fun. Yourself, no, right. that's not me. I've always got a big well, grin on my Master face, and I'm having a good time. Do you think that people will be learning from? They could learn from Master of O. A lot of your reviews in the book are from women. Like you've got some influential uh, Dita Von Teese and yep. Margaret Cho, Carol Queen. Yep. Um, do you think your book is more for for women, men? You think everyone can learn from it? Uh, well, I'd like to and think and be enjoyed and turned on and hot and all uh, like sure. That. Yes, I'd they like to think yes. it does Have all that. Pleasure. Let me say that my intentions here were not educational. Right. I didn't want to write that book. No, that but book's you still, been written. But, it, it, but it's, it's, I'm not it, saying you it, can't have it's yeah. But I think that I think you've never you seen this I think what what you can learn from reading this book is something about the people, something about the personalities who are drawn to this life. You'll learn a lot of technical stuff about right. what they do. I mean, but I, I think that's what people want to know about the psychology. They're confused by it. Well, a lot what I like sure. about this book is there's no na- there's no naive person. There's no stand-in for the innocent. No. right, so, which is different than the, did the, you the watch, original. Did you watch? Did you watch Sopranos? Yes. You the first episode. You're dropped into the world. Exactly. Singers, you're dropped into this world. I love it. Okay, well, we've only got a few more minutes, so let's let's read an excerpt oh, from Master of O. Okay, this takes um, the beginning of the second chapter. Um, O and Ray, uh, Stephen and Ray are half brothers. O is Ray's partner. For the evening, Ray has given O to Stephen, and O has accepted this challenge. Okay. He has left her to go change into a robe and expects to find her nude in the living room um, after he comes back. Um, f- uh, from the long bar of robes and dressing gowns, he continued today's theme with a heavy black silk turnbull and asser. Its wide quilted shawl lapels and matching cuffs piped in red. How many pairs of skull-embroidered velvet slippers could one man wear in a lifetime? Stephen's own extravagances made him cringe occasionally, but now is not the time for introspection, always expecting him to be his bad self, what most women wanted from him. He lowered the lights and headed out into tonight's arena. 
As expected, he found O in the living room, displayed as precisely as all the artifacts he kept under glass, stripped to her red soled pumps, stay-ups, the long gloves she'd impulsively slipped back on, and the collar around her neck. O knelt on her high heels in the middle of the dragon rug. Her knees were wide apart, her hands still laced behind her head like the condemned, awaiting execution. Shoulders squared, breasts out, chin straight, eyes lowered. When Stephen stopped and stared, a slight tremor washed over her, though of course she didn't turn her head to look at him. She was the one there to be looked at. Stephen was perfectly rude about taking in the view, making her stand at attention, walking around her, looking high and low. Yes, there were surprises. Oh, could have rouged her nipples a shade darker so the rings stood out more, but they were far from inconspicuous. Though only an inch and a half in diameter, they were wicked thick, agonizingly stretched from an initial ten gauge to their current six. Plain stainless with black hematite captive bead closings, they clearly wanted to be grabbed, weighted, tied, and made to hurt. Stephen took in the slender shoulders and spectacular natural teardrop breath of the type for which women in this town paid vast thumbs and still didn't get. O's belly, flat and cut from fanatical exercise, her perfectly sculpted pink lower lips, the high tight buttocks and the long straight legs with slender ankles, all comprised a fine inventory and both of them knew it. Stephen could see O's pulse thumping in her carotids. A droplet of sweat trickled in each armpit. He was quite certain she was dripping elsewhere, too. The tightening, throbbing bulge under his silk robe was just as apparent to the two of them. Stephen let her stay at attention as he plucked the half-joint from the ashtray and fired up with a big, giant lighter, inhaling a big hit. He approached O at leisure, his head wreathed in smoke. He seemed so accustomed to having whatever he wanted, absolutely devoid of shame or doubt, and she was alone with him at last. Nothing stood between him and what he wanted of her. He stopped in front of O's face, tracing her cheek with the fingertip. I love this moment, he said quietly, so full of promise. Mm, I like it. Well, so everyone's go. got to read. Hey, you got to get it. You got to get it. You got to go to masterofo.com. Masterofo by Tom Ernst. <laughs> buy yourself an ebook and come the 1st of July, there will be a paperback version oh, on really? sale. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, Print well, version, I'm going to. Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, so in Nina Hartley, we'll plug. What's your website? That, the Nina, best one Nina, Nina.com. And you can follow me on Twitter. Nina what.com? Nina.com. Just Nina? Mm-hmm. You got Nina.com. Mm-hmm. N-I-N-A. Yep, 20 years ago. Jesus, that was good. She fought for it. Well, oh. the, the one good thing my exes did for me. And if you want to follow <laughs> me on Twitter, it's at Nina Land, Disneyland, only Nina Land. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you, Ernest Green. Thank you yes. so much for being on the show. I Thanks feel like you could go me. on. You guys got to come back as always. You're always welcome on the show. Um, Anderson, what up? Thanks for being with you with me tonight. Yeah, of course. I love you, mean it. Yeah, yeah. Um, everyone, follow me Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Sex with Emily. And thanks so much for listening. Was it good for you? Email me feedback at sexwithemily.com. I'm Emily from sexwithemily.com. Crazy Girl Products carries unique pheromone infused products that scientifically make you hotter and feel more confident. I love their new After Dark line, especially their Lip Nip Tingle. To find out what that means, go to crazygirlproducts.com, use coupon code EMILY25, and get 25% off your purchase when you buy something at crazygirlproducts.com. Perhaps play a little game called Just a Tip, just for a second, just to see how it feels. Hey, this is Jordan Harbinger, host of the Art of Charm podcast, the number one dating and relationship advice podcast in iTunes. I'm Emily Morse, host of the Sex with Emily podcast, the number one sex and relationship podcast on iTunes and at sexwithemily.com. And this is just the tip. You mentioned on another tip about mutual masturbation. What exactly is that? I think a lot of people are probably getting some interesting visuals here. I love mutual masturbation because, first of all, masturbation is also a form of sex. But when you do it with a partner, it can be a great way to share intimacy and get some other sexual secrets. So if you're, mas- if you're masturbating and she's masturbating next to you, you can see how she touches herself. Does she rub her clitoris in circles? Does she go up and down? Maybe she touches the outside of her clitoris. Maybe she uses her fingers or a vibrator. It's a, just a great way to learn how your partner touches himself so you can mimic some of those moves and know what turns them on. I think it's like, and it's fun and it's hot to watch your partner masturbate. I think it's hot. A lot of women do, men do, watching each other. Why not? What if it? What if it's a little awkward? It can be awkward at first, maybe, or maybe you could help each other. Then she could watch you for a while, and then she could take over, and you could take over what she's doing, and you could both just have manually stimulated orgasms together. Cool. Sounds, yeah. like, sounds like a plan. I mean, it might seem awkward to people, but you got to get through. You could also keep your eyes closed. Um, it can be more comfortable to slip into your comfort zone. I know part of it is watching them, but you don't have to leave your eyes open the whole time. So just kind of get into your, your rhythm and, and, and your groove. And, you know, sometimes the awkward things are the things that, you know, make us the most advance us sexually. Sure. And it sure beats masturbating by yourself. Exactly. If you guys want to learn more from The Art of Charm about dating, relationships, and even networking for business, visit us at theartofcharmpodcast.com. 
or check us out on iTunes and follow me on Twitter at The Art of Charm. And check out the Sex with Emily podcast at sexwithemily.com and on iTunes if you want to have the best sex of your life, that is. Also, follow me on Twitter at Sex with Emily. Buying a car can be such a stressful experience, but True Car is changing car buying forever. True Car actually helps car buyers get rid of the fear that they might overpay, and that fear is the worst. Last month, over 45,000 cars were sold by the True Car Certified Dealer Network, and TrueCar.com users save an average of $3,046 off MSRP. So, when you're ready to buy a car, you just gotta follow these three easy steps that if you want to save money. First, go to TrueCar.com and find out what other people paid for the car you're looking for. Then, register at TrueCar.com to see upfront pricing information and then you lock in your savings. Third step, totally simple. All you do is you print out your True Car Savings Certificate and then you take it to the True Car Certified Dealer for a better, hassle-free car buying experience. Who doesn't want that? Some features not available in all states and every day, TrueCar.com users receive negotiation free, guaranteed savings. Save time, save money, and never overpay. Why would you do that? Visit TrueCar.com today. That's TrueCar.com.